Hey, how you doing? This is Pastor Mike Bitter again, and welcome to the Wednesday night service. It's great to have you here like it is as always. And also, welcome to the newest way of doing things, online worship services just for you. This is a new way um, to connect and stay connected with our Lord and Savior. So we're going to be right here every Wednesday night at 6.30 and every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I am so proud to be here and also to be a Christian. There is so much to see. There's so much that's going on right now. Car manufacturers say they can produce ventilators in place of cars. There was a mask shortage. So I heard there were two ladies that took them upon themselves to start sewing face masks for the medical people. The city of Waterloo, Nebraska is making phone calls to check on people. These are the ba basic kind of things and I am so proud to see all this happening. It is, it's just awesome. And we're also stepping out here at the church. We're, we're having our Bible studies and we're also reaching out and connecting with churches, other churches in the area finding out how we can help them and how they can help us, how they can help our community. And we hope you'll find ways to reach out to others too. This is what America is built on. Ingenuity, creative, creativity, and downright not failing, and we're not going to. I want to read a short story to you that um, my wife sent me. I'm not trying to plagiarize, but I don't know who wrote it, but it came from Facebook. And what it is is people looking at us, looking at America, once again, just like what happened in 911, and said, you're going down. And we stepped up and we said no. The reports are that the truckers are getting supplies to stores. People are stocking shelves all night long and letting elderly people go first in the mornings. Carnival Cruise has stepped up and told the president that they can match the Navy hospitals, comfort and mercy, with some well-staffed cruise ships. Everybody is starting to step up. This is incredible. GM said, hold our cars. Watch this. We can make those ventilators where we were once making cars. Now we can start making ventilators. Restaurants said, hmm, we have kitchens. We can feed children. NBA basketball players said, hold our basketballs while we write checks to pay the arena staff. Construction companies said that here's some masks that they had for the medical staff. Yeah, we're a nation divided. That's what people think at least. And they also think that we can't live without baseball, without NASCAR, NBA, or going to the beach, or going to a bar. I think there was a Japanese admiral, he was in the middle of the Pacific in 1941, and he said, I think we have awakened a sleeping giant. That is America. What people didn't count on is just watch. Just watch what we can do. We always come back stronger. Isn't it wonderful? We're all working through this. We're all working this out. And we are not going to be overcome. It's just like Jesus said in Matthew 6, 18. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. And that will... That is what Jesus promised with his church. Even the worst things coming against it will not tear it down. And I see the same thing for America. I don't care what comes against us. We're going to have courage. We're going to stand up. And whatever comes against us, we're going to beat it. And we're going to beat it together. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian, an atheist, or an agnostic. I see everyone pitching in and helping. We're having to look at things a little bit differently now. And guess what? That's okay. We might not understand what God's doing, but what is he asking you to do? Where does he want you to be involved with what's going on? God has put something in your heart, and only you know what it is. God may put it on your heart to help others. He may put it on your heart to make phone calls, to check on people, 
be there with some people that have been isolated. He may have put it on your heart to cook meals for people who can't get out or maybe going grocery shopping for someone who shouldn't be in the store, but they still need help. They still need somebody else to go out there for them. Maybe God is telling you to shelter in place. That's okay. Listen to what God is, God is saying. Maybe he's telling you to stay away from others until all this blows away. What God puts on your heart is different than what God puts on my heart. All I'm saying is listen to that still small voice and answer his invitation, whatever that is. Uh, I, I know what God is not telling us. It may be hard sometimes to hear about hear what God is telling us because it's that still small voice. But I know what God is not telling us. In Second Chronicles twenty fifteen, He says, "Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. Don't be discouraged because of all of this that's going on, and don't be afraid." That's God's words, not mine. That's what God's telling you. In Deuteronomy thirty one six, God said. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That is the truth. That's what comes straight out of the Bible. God said, don't be afraid. Have courage. Deuteronomy 31.8, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. It's all through the Bible. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We need to remember these words. We need to remember these words of courage, these words that God gave us to stand up. Don't be afraid. Don't don't crumble back because he's there with us through all of it. Like, like the reading said, awaken the sleeping giant. Stand up. Help each other. See what, listen to what God's telling you. Have courage and press on. Biblically speaking, we can only be create, courageous by having faith and confidence in the fact that God is with us and he's for us. This kind of confidence inspires courage, and it dispels the opposite, our fears. Jesus, who is God in the flesh, he all the time he was talking to his followers, and a lot of times he admonished them and said, don't be afraid. Believe in him. For example, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me also. That was John 14, 1. Or how about John 16, 33, where he said, I have, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribu tribulation. This is still out of the Bible. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. And pretty soon we have Easter coming up. That was Jesus' resurrection, where he beat death. He took all of our sins for us, and he beat death. Paul also talked about our relationship with God through Jesus as the basis for our courage. When he said, if God is for us, who can be against us? He didn't spare his own son, but gave him, gave him up for us all how will he how will he not also how will he not also with him graciously give all things who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That was in Romans 8th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. We are protected by a much higher authority. 
Don't be afraid. Don't get discouraged. Maintain your peace and be courageous in, tro in troubled times. No matter how no matter how hard it seems to follow the authorities and what they've told us. They and what they've told us in Romans 8:31, 31, it says, "Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established." The authorities that exist have been established by God. They ask us to do things. Keep a six foot distance from other people. Yeah, it's about six feet. I think I've got three feet here and three feet there. So stay that far away from other people. Wash your hands regularly. They're asking us not to gather in groups of more than 10 people. Listen to them. This is short term. And we're hearing that things are going well. The one thing I know is no matter what I hear, what I hear is I hear the Word of God talking to me. There's nothing that goes on without God's approval. And for some reason, He's letting this happen. There's going to be things happen that we're not going to understand. But keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your faith in Christ Jesus. What kind of, what kind of faith with with that kind of faith we don't have to live in fear fear is not one of the fruits of the spirit the fruits of the spirit are love joy peace kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control meditate on these things find fruit that in addition in addition to standing on your lord in addition to standing on God and Jesus, stand on one of those fruits of the Spirit. Figure out ways to bring love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control to other people. And show those things as we go through what we're going through right now. I'm so proud of everyone and everything that I've seen right now. I, I couldn't even imagine how much people are coming together. The phone calls I get, the people that I talk to. I've seen people working together, even if it's for a phone call, just to check on other people. I've seen courage. I've seen communities coming together. I see non-Christians acting like Christians. No slam, guys, but this is your opportunity. The Lord is making all of this happen. Look for the bad and all this heartache, and you're going to find it. But look for the good, and you're going to find that too. It is there. Because many of the day-to-day -day distractions no longer exist, now you have time. Now you have time to listen. Time to listen to that still, small voice of courage, of power, of strength, of guidance. So this week... Stay strong. Be ready for what's coming. We don't know what's coming. God does. Jeremiah 29, 11. God said, I have a plan for you. Plan for hopes and riches. Because many of the day-to-day -day distractions are gone, they no longer exist. Now you have time. Take time to listen to what that still, small voice is telling you. And decide, what are you going to do when you hear that still, small voice? There's one final verse I want to leave with you. It's John 14, 27. What Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I don't give you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Most of all, keep your eyes focused on the way, the truth, and the light. You're prepared. And if there's anything you're unsure of, turn to the Lord in prayer. So let's do that right now. Let's let's end this let's end this today with a prayer. And as long as you're in a place where you can pray, let's uh, bow our head in prayers as one body, as the body of Christ. Lord, thank you for all that you've done for us, even in times of trials. You, even in times of trials. And times meant to discourage us, 
we turn our eyes to you. We look to you for your overwhelming strength and power. Help us to see where you're working and equip us to follow your still small voice, the voice that calms and let us know everything will be all right. That you are the rock, you are our rock. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you haven't given your life to Christ yet, we want to take this opportunity for you to do that. Just pray, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I take you into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. And we believe that if you pray this simple prayer, you've been born again. Stay connected, either through the internet or by talking with someone on the phone or in person. The biggest thing right now is stay connected. Drop back in on any of our online services. Next week we'll be right here, Wednesday at 6.30, and next, su next Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. If you'd like to make an offering, just click on donation below, and you can make an offering so we can keep this ministry going. And we're reaching out to people. We're reaching people who right now are isolated, who right now... God's telling them to shelter in place and stay where they are. For right now, this is Mike Bitter. Keep your eyes on Jesus. We'll see you next time. Bye.